I don't know why it's using the light. I kind of want to turn that off. Can I turn that off? No, I can't. Anyways, I guess it'll be bright. But um, I'm watching LAR's uh, latest video about um, him losing his paternity case um, and, you know, the things that he's going through. And um, it just made me think, like, you're going to have something called, and this is not what he did, but, you know, um, you're going to have what I would like to call passive abandonment. And for those, I have no kids. I only have my nephew um, and my dog. So I have fur babies. <laughs> <clears throat> get a dog live content um but i'm not saying this is what lar did i'm just kind of talking about it brainstorming looking into the future in a sense and what will be commonplace so um lar is going through his thing um you could watch his video hour long but it's something that you know a lot of fathers are seeing or dealing with where the mother just pushes the father away and this just made me think of a term, passive abandonment. And it's not really that um, the father abandons the child in the literal sense of like actively, you know, not answering phone calls, not being there, not showing up, you know. Um, but it'll be more or less like, <coughs> excuse me, if you listen to Reddit stories on YouTube, it'll be something like um, malicious compliance, where... If the mother says, I don't want you to call him, you call me and then you, then I call you or, or then I get him. So you only call him through me and all this other stuff. And okay, you call the mother. She doesn't answer. Okay, cool. So you only do that a couple more times before you're like, listen, I'm not doing this anymore. So um, it'll be one of those things where the father will eventually just go with the tide or just actually will go with the flow, go with the tide. So eventually what will happen is the tide will just wash the father out of the child's life and it'll be the child the father will be completely out of sight <coughs> excuse me the father will be completely out of sight sorry i'm moving around here but the father will be completely out of sight and eventually just not be there for the child right in one way shape form or another so you'll see it where the father um, will try and show up uh, to games and everything, <clears throat> and then he'll be he'll, he'll be met with some type of resistance. Um, any efforts that he has to meet with the child one on one, work with the child, stay with the child, discipline the child, or anything else like that, um, will be thwarted or um, downright ignored. Will be thwarted or downright ignored. <clears throat> and that will put the father in a precarious position or in a place where he's just like, well, I tried, you know, and then the court will say, hey, listen, did you do this? Did you do this? Yes, I did all this. This is the records that show that this, so on and so forth. And then the judge or anybody else will ask, well, why don't you try harder? And it's like, well, sir, you know, I'm well, I'm doing everything within the, you know, the letter of the law. And I've tried to make contact. I've met up for, you know, um, what's it called? I've met up for the drop offs and pickups and everything else like that. And then, you know, if the, you know, the mother starts to teach the kid to hate the father and then the kid doesn't want to be with the father, then you're going to be like, OK, well, I try to be with him, but he doesn't want to be with me because the mother has put it in his head that, um, you know, he, the, the father dislikes you or just, just create some type of schism between the child and the father. And then the father would just be like, OK, well, you know, I tried. I did this, you know. It's kind of like if you deal with like a woman and like, again, it's, it's not the exact same, of course, but it's like if you deal with a woman and then you try a couple times to reach out to her and she just doesn't answer her phone anymore. I mean, what are you going to do? Keep on just talking to yourself in her, um, you know, uh, what's it called? In her DMs or text messages. Like there's that whole thing where it's like, you know, double texting or triple texting. So essentially you sent three messages on three different occasions, not like back to back to back, but like three different occasions, like Monday you sent a message, Monday night you sent a message, Tuesday morning you sent a message. So there's like a considerable amount of time in between these messages, right? But then nobody's answering. And then you're like, well, why should I keep on trying? So I call it, I usually call it get the get a clue. But um, men are passively gonna say, hey, listen, you know, I tried. And not on some like fuck them kids, but like, I got my own life to live. I tried. I really am out here. I'm trying to work with the mother. You know, I'm um, trying to get to a point where I can um, see my child on a regular basis, 
pour into them the knowledge that I have and help them through life, so on and so forth. The child does not want that from me, so I'm not going to force that upon the child. No matter what the law says, no matter what morality says, no matter what family value says, fathers are going to do... Um, do what they're supposed to and then if what they're supposed to, or what they're um what the, what they do is met with some type of resistance then they're going to do they're going to meet they're going to be compliant right and this is you know this is what the legal system wants you to be compliant so it's just like okay malicious compliance you know we can call it malicious compliance that probably be a better way of saying it too um instead of like you know um passive abandonment but we're going to get to a point where, you know, father's just going to be like, hey, listen, I tried this. You told me to do this. I met here. The mother didn't want to meet. She had her own problems. Now that the, the son is, you know, acting out and then he wants to act crazy and the mother wants to send him to me. No, I have my own thing going on. I have my own family going on. He's going to have to fend for himself or get better for what he chose. And then, you know, people will be like, well, he's only a child or she's only a child. She didn't know any better. I was like, listen, I try to impart better. The mother blocked me at every turn. So what can I do? I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. But that child is not going to come to my home, disrespect me in my home. And then I'm going to have another legal trouble because the things that I try to do to um, stop this from happening were thwarted at every at every turn. So that's not my problem. So that's now, again, the state's problem. Or the kid's going to have to deal with it and the mother's going to have to deal with it. If the child wants to talk to me over the phone or something like that, cool. We could talk over the phone, but he's going to have to be respectful. You know, there's not going to be any back and forth and all this other stuff. I'm not going to do any of that. And I'm also not going to talk badly about your mother. Your mother is your mother and that's who you chose to be with. Or your mother is your mother and that's who, um, you know, did what they did to you. You need to go and talk to them. I'm not the complaint department. You need to go and talk to them. And, you know... People might be saying, hey, listen, it's easy for you to say, young Grizzly, you haven't had kids or anything else like that. Um, Yes and no. I mean, that's just how I am. Most people won't do that. I will understand that. I've made videos before. Fuck them kids and fuck them kids part two. You know, where it's just like, you're not saying fuck them kids. The mother's saying fuck them kids by the decisions that she's making in terms of the child's relationship with you. And this is where we have to really start to understand and see that the amount of stress that we're putting ourselves through... Because somebody else has the um, the foundation, the backing, the support of the court system, they have that at their um, you know, they have that at their fingertips, so to speak, or you know, they can use that against you just so that that system can extract money from you. Um, they think they're on you know that what's it called? They're winning, but this is a short term win. You know, these eighteen years or how many every years that you're going to have to pay child support that ends pretty quickly. And people don't understand that, you know, and in some cases, you know, some fathers will be like, listen, I'm not going to be here for this and you've destroyed my life. And, you know, I'm just not going to stick around for that to happen. And, you know, honestly, it's going to be almost like a MGTOW movement. And this is why a part of the reason why I'm saying this. Um, I didn't think about this until now. So I'm just coming up with this as I go. But, you know, it, it makes sense that fathers are going to be like this, because when you start to see that you have the power of choice, which is kind of what MGTOW was about, is that you actually do have a choice. And one of your choices is to not participate. And this is what's going to happen where fathers are going to be. They're going to come to grips that hey, say, hey, listen, I do not participate in this child's life. Like, I, I just like I'm not going to participate in this BS, the back and forth and all this other stuff. And that means I won't participate in this child's life. And it is what it is. Um, I'm going to I'll get over it. And I think that's I think that something like that is going to happen um, in mass uh, or greater numbers where men are just going to be like, listen, it doesn't make any sense for me to go through all of this for somebody that doesn't want to. Um, uh, the child doesn't want to be with me and the parent, uh, the other mother or the, the mother doesn't want to be with, um, doesn't want to um, allow that child to be around me. And she's going to use everything, even though she knows the truth, she's going to tell half stories or lie um, just to get her way and get some type of control. And it's like, if you want control, no problem. I'm not going to fight you for control. Like, for instance, um, I do this in dating. And again, this is one of the reasons why I'm single. So take it with a grain of salt or a whole cup of it. I don't know. But um, I'm not going to fight a woman to, for her to be with me. You know, I'm not going to. It's not that I don't try hard. It's not that I don't call or anything else like that. But if a person wants to be with you, they will. If a person wants you to be their, fa um, be their father, they will. They will allow you to do that. If a person wants you to be the father of their child, they're going to allow you to do that. 
And it's not on some like picking thing, even though we would say to women, you should have picked better. But even women should understand that, hey, listen, if the man doesn't want to be a father, don't fight for him to be a father. Like, you know, just deal with it. Like, it is what it is. You're going to have to deal with the fact that this person um, wants to give you less of their time um, or anything else. So really, <coughs> excuse me, really, that's not really up to that's not really up to you. It's an uncontrolled variable. It's a it's a it's a variable or an unknown variable. And it's something that you're just going to have to deal with. So um, with all that being said, uh, I can't talk too long about something that I don't really uh, I'm just like talking about this, my thoughts, in a sense, how I would handle it. But um, it would be hard. But once you know you've done what you're supposed to do, then it's an easy decision or it's easier to disconnect. Um, take that however you want, you know, um, say, Hey, young grizzly, you're totally fucking wrong. That's stupid. I would never give up my kids. Um, or just say, Hey, listen, man, um, I understand it. Um, I don't choose to do that. Um, or I understand it. That will probably be the best route for me right now because of the level of stress that I'm going through, um, for something that, you know, came from my own loins, so to speak. And honestly, not on some uh, invincible, uh, uh, invincible's father uh, in the comment in the in the series where he says like you know I can always have another kid you know what's I can I can always make another, um, but just on some I tried, like that that's all there is to it and you could just you could walk away with that and be peace be at peace because the thing is a lot of people expect you they're banking on you to fight. It gives them some type of energy. It gives them some type of attention, some type of, um, oh man. It, it feeds them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. It's odd. It's understandable. Still odd. Feels odd at least. But they get something out of this. Something that you can't fathom and something that you really shouldn't even try and wrap your head around. Understand this. Passive abandonment, malicious compliance might grow as a way that fathers are going to look at their own offspring. And they're going to say, hey, listen, I tried. You blocked me. I tried. I'm not going to play a game that I just cannot win. Everything is stacked against me. And the only way I can win this game is by never playing. This is what we're seeing in MGTOW, and this is probably what we're going to see going forward in paternity courts. All righty. Thank you very much for listening. As always, love you all. Peace. Go and watch LAR Movements. That's L-A-R Movement. Um, his video, LAR Movements video, um, it's like a live stream. It looks like he reposted it or something like that. But um, go and watch his video and uh, like see if I'm right. See if I, what I'm saying makes sense. You know, There's many other men, even in this space, that have tried um even more and harder than him and have come up with the same result because everything is stacked against them for one reason or another if you think i'm wrong hey talk about it in the comment section and we can go from there peace